Her Majesty's ship 5, 14th of February 1984, at sea, which is where we have spent a considerable amount of our time since we first went to sea as a ship's company in December 1982. Falkland Islands are now 1,300 miles stern, and there's a good feeling about the ship. We have done well, we are as efficient and effective as a warship as we are ever likely to be. Barbados, our first shore leave in four months, is only 4,000 miles to go. After that, it's Fort Wolfdale, Florida, then east across the Atlantic and home for some well-earned leave. And it is well earned. We have been working very hard in the last 18 months. Fife was in the middle of a three-year refit when the Falklands War started. Our ship had to be brought forward swiftly to help cover the ship losses sustained in that conflict. And the ships needed to deploy to the Falklands area since the war to keep the peace which has yet to be declared. We have just finished our tour of duty as leader of the task unit of the Falklands, a duty which has kept us at sea for the best part of five months. We have been at immediate readiness for action, which fortunately has not happened. But we have lost one of our company, apprentice Jonathan Mills, in a shipboard accident, as a, as a result of which he died. So to what purpose have we worked and trained to be in the South Atlantic or anywhere else in the world? We Britons enjoy the right to choose our leaders. We have a vote. If we do not like our government, we can change it by free election. This choice which we take for granted is not the normal for the world. More than half the world's population do not have a choice. They do not have that freedom. The Royal Navy has for centuries been the instrument by which we have maintained that freedom, and it still is. We are all of us volunteers, whose primary purpose is to maintain our freedoms of our islands and people. And that is what we have just been doing. However, we seldom talk about our lives in Fife in that manner. We, most of us enjoy being in a ship, but do not wish to spend too much time at sea. We enjoy visiting foreign ports, but we do not wish to spend too much time away from home. All sailors wish to be proud of the ship, we are proud of the fight. We have set some records along the way in cracking a program which some thought could not be done. We are 460 sails aboard, all individuals, but all one company. This video covers that part of our commission from the start of our five month deployment to the South Atlantic until our return home to Portsmouth in March of 84. This video was made to try and show you something of our life on board during our five months away. It will show you some of us at work and most of us at play. The first part of our story begins on a cold and windy Tuesday morning in October here in Portsmouth. When we sailed to join the other warships of the unit, HM ships Yarmouth, Apollo and Manchester. We spent several days carrying out weapon training and learning to work with the other ships as a team before arriving in Gibraltar where we spent five days doing maintenance and enjoying some sport in the sun. We then headed south to Ascension Island, by which time we had been joined by our two RFAs, Ulna and Fort Grange. After a brief stop at Ascension, it was on towards the Falklands, 
where we finally arrived on Saturday the 19th of November. When we left Portsmouth, the ship's company were falling in in procedure Alpha, but it was the last time we were going to be seeing our home port for several months. Queen's Harbour Master was there in his barge to see us off. And there was a small flotilla of other boats watching us sail. Uh, we passed the Victory and also the Ice Patrol ship, the Endurance, whom we were to meet later on during our trip. And then passing through the entrance to Portsmouth Harbour, we had a last view of friends and families seeing us off from the Round Tower. As soon as we were clear of Portsmouth Harbour and out into the English Channel, it was on with the training. We fired our SeaCat missiles. training was going on, the rest of the ship company were working as normal. Someone had to steer the ship all the time, no matter what weapons were being fired. And there were also engineers down below steering the ship. And of course the chefs were always busy cooking for a 450 odd in the ship's company. Various radars needed to be tried out and to do this we released several balloons covered with a wire netting so that we could check the performance of the radar sets. We had temporary targets made of oil cans which we threw over the side and used those with some of our smaller weapons. Here we are using the newly fitted B marks. and also the LMGs were put to good use. heading further south towards Gibraltar and the weather was improving all the time. Also the helicopter had to get in some practice 
The flight deck crews were trained in fitting various weapons to the helicopter, and here you see them fitting a sea skewer. We also met up with a tanker on the way so that we could refuel. But it wasn't all work, we did have a little bit of play and on the way to Gibraltar we had our Miss Fife competition. HMS 5 knockout, six aside, deck hockey tournament. 
Another one of the competitions was the first of many deck hockey contests. Right, three mess get away quickly into the attack now. Chief Stoker running away like hell there. Being pushed around a bit, but never mind. Here we got Robbie's there again. There he goes. My cameraman's having a bit of difficulty here following these people away. Eric Cunliffe getting stuck in. Stan Ainley now with a throw in from that line. No, skin skinner, miss the puck, but never mind, tap out of go, no. A couple of people laying on the ground over there, holding his nose, that's poor skin, never mind. Close there, Tannoy Ted at the end of the first half. Wouldn't like to waste my money on any of these teams at the moment. Talking of wasting your money, hope you're getting your money ready for the horse racing tonight. Right, hit off again now, won that time by the Greenies. Just go Cox to the far side there, stopped by Duncan the chippy. Eric Cunliffe trying to get in, but no, nice save there by Tannoy Ted. Quick long distance hit there by Chief Stoker Robbie, but it's just wide. Stan Langley now to throw in. Up, oh, Robbie's got it again, puts it back in. John Simpson has it, and he scores! Good goal there by John Simpson. Right, 1-0 now to the old men of three mess. They're doing quite well here this afternoon, aren't they? Hit off again. That's it, straight over. Greenies to throw in. Good try, but Chief Chippy gets his feet in the way again. Good go, and good goal there, good goal. I didn't even see who scored that one. That's one goal each now. One goal each in the second half of this final. But good hit off. John Simpson almost scores. Stan stops it to the edge. That is the whistle for time. <laughs> right, here we go. And hits the post. Right, who's going to have a go this time? Taff. I've got to only call him Taff. I don't know what his surname is. Tannoy Todd ready. And he scored a goal. So... That's it then, the Greenies on penalties in the end score the winning goal and win tonight's afternoon knockout deck hockey competition. And then finally one early morning, Gibraltar appeared out of the mist. spent five days in Gibraltar where we managed to catch up with some of our maintenance and a few minor repairs which had to be carried out and also there was a fair amount of sport going on ashore as this was going to be our last opportunity for sport for some months. Here's a view of the Admiral's offices and the berth that we're about to pull into. One of the major sporting events while we were there was the rock race in which about a hundred or so people took part starting on the jetty in the dockyard and running right to the top of the rock in Gibraltar. As you can see it, it is rather a steep road to the top of the rock. This is running up past the casino where they turned off the main road up to a side track which led to the top. Through here, but I'll have a quick, quick few minutes. Seven <coughs> minutes. Stop posing. Round the corner, lads. Round the corner. 
Sharp left. Keep pushing up, John. Goodbye, Mickey. Keep going. Keep going, groggy boy. Hold on, keep it going. Oh, Good boy, Trev. Come on, son. Come on, Trevor. Open Just it up. Keep going, Mike. Good boy, Robbie. Come on, son. Push it out. from the top of a rock, a view out over the dockyard of the ships. Then it was away from Gibraltar and on towards Ascension Island. On the way there we had to refuel from the British Tamar, which is a civilian tanker taken up from trade by the Ministry of Defence, to keep ships refuelled between Gibraltar and Ascension Island. The Fort Grange had joined us by this time and ships were taking the opportunity to collect stores from her. There we see the Manchester about to go alongside the Fort Grange. And there we have the Apollo. The British Tamar is not fitted out for normal refuelling at sea, so we have to use what is called the astern method, where the hose is dragged astern of the British Tamar and we collect the hose, drag it in over the side and connect it up at a fueling point on the forecastle. We had an opportunity to stop once to allow hands to bathe. Here we are in the middle of the South Atlantic. As you can see, rather warmer than it was when we left Portsmouth. And there's the safety boat in the background. 
allowing many members of the ship's company half an hour to go for a swim. A very deep swimming pool. This, I don't think anybody managed to touch the bottom. See the other ships of the group also stopping for a swim in the background. Eventually the swim period was over and it was all back on board so we can carry on heading south. One thing we had to do before we arrived in the Falklands was to top up with food and naval stores. We did this by going alongside Fort Grange where we had rather a long rouse, took most of the afternoon, where we topped up on all our foodstuffs, beer, naval stalls and greases and oils. In order to do this, we had two jack positions, one on the forecastle, and there was a further storing position on the flight deck. This, in fact, was the last rouse of any sort to take place in the sunshine before we got to the colder weathers of the Falkland Islands. In order to get all the stores over to the ship in the short time that was available to us, virtually the whole of the ship's company was used. And of course, once the stores were on board, they had to be stored below.
and then there was time for refreshment as everybody built up rather a large sweat. We arrived at Ascension where we spent 24 hours. We managed to get a tour around Ascension so that we could uh, take some film for the lads that couldn't get ashore. We see here a view of Ascension Island Golf Course. Infamous because of its mention in the Guinness Book of Records as the worst golf course in the world. This is a view of English Harbour. And this is the bus stop at One Boats. Again, an infamous place as there is no bus service on the island. The island is almost entirely volcanic, as you can see in the scenery as we drive along the roadways. And there's a view back towards where the ship is anchored in the bay at Georgetown. There was a rather hastily arranged football match between HMS Fife and the local RAF people. As you can see, rather a dusty football pitch. Here we have a look over towards the new RAF camp which is being built. At the moment, the majority of uh, service personnel on the island live in tents and in porter cabins. And this is uh, the cable and wireless satellite station. And here a view of the North American Space Administration headquarters on the island where they do satellite tracking. This is Wide Awake Airport the only airstrip on the island, with a runway over two miles long. Here we see some of the Hercules and one of the Nimrods, which regularly use the island. And also the Victor tankers in the background, which are used to refuel the Hercules aircraft that fly from Ascension Island to the Falklands. The landscape on the island is very lunar. In fact, it so much resembled the moon that the Americans used it to try their moon buggy. Here we see a view of the capital of Georgetown and the main street in Georgetown. Finally, it was back to the ship, ready to head on once more south towards the Falkland Islands. And a bit more time for relaxation on the way south, this time with pistol shooting on the flight deck.
another competition that was held again on the flight deck was a tug of war. And this is the final between three Delta Mess and number two Mess. Unfortunately for two mess, three Delta made it look very easy and won the final in two straight pulls. And afterwards, just to right wind up the evening, we had a barbecue and again on the flight deck. So, just to pass away a few hours in the evening, there was a little bit of horse racing. Number three mess cooked the barbecue on this occasion, and they also were there to provide the washers up. Sunday the 11th of November we had on board our Remembrance Day service. One of the few ships we came across during our journey south was this Russian satellite tracking ship. We took the opportunity to stop and give her the quick once over. And then it was on with our final bit of sport for the trip down, which was brighter cricket, again played on the flight deck.
And finally, we arrived in San Carlos Water. And there to greet us was the crew of HMS Bristol, the ship which we were due to relieve. Also waiting for us was Father Christmas, with quite a few bags of mail. As you can see, the Bristol had quite a few posters waiting to welcome us, and they were all rather jubilant because they were on their way home. Our first look around San Carlos water didn't really fill us with too much enthusiasm. Rather a cold, bleak, windy view. and we were in fact to see quite a lot of San Carlos water over the next few months. And as the time came for the Bristol to leave, there were cheers and songs flowing over from the Bristol. The ship that we are alongside here is the tanker Alviga, which is a ship that we used to come along quite regularly to refuel. And as the Bristol steams away, the other ships in her group also sail to catch up with her where they will be heading home in time for Christmas. And so finally we arrived in the Falklands on November the 19th. We were to spend the next three months in the Falklands, some of the time on patrol, some of the time carrying out exercises and training, and some of the time relaxing. The time on patrol was spent entirely in defence watches, and consequently we have very little film of this period. A lot of people managed to get ashore in various parts of the Falklands and drew an up trip to South Georgia. In this part of the video, we shall be seeing some of these places and also some of the activities which have been going on around the ship during our time in the Falklands. Amongst places you will see will be San Carlos, where we carried out a maintenance period, and also where we used to go to refuel. Stanley, where we carried out two short maintenance periods, we were also there for a battle day parade, and also for the visit of Michael Heseltine, Secretary of State for Defence. And the final place is New Island, where the ship spent Christmas Day and Boxing Day. In January, the ship took a well-earned break from the Falklands and sailed to South Georgia. Whilst there, we visited the disused whaling stations at Leith, Gritvacan, the capital, and Stromness. We also did a scenic tour of some of the glaciers in the southeast end of the island, but unfortunately, the day we were there, we were caught by a blizzard and snowstorms and didn't see very much of the glaciers.
whilst we were in defence watches, this was the normal dress of the ship's company. Our action coveralls, anti-flash gear, and always carrying with us our life jackets in our respirator bags. The weapons were always fully manned in this state, and in fact the close range weapons were manned all the time that we were down in the Falkland Islands patrol zone. The MCO was always busy, with hundreds of signals coming and leaving the ship each day. One of the first exercises which we did in the Falklands was our high seas firing. During this period, us and Apollo and Yarmouth fired all of our close range weapons and also our medium range weapons. There goes the sea cat. And here we see HMS Apollo firing her 4-5 gun. We also fired our sea slugs. And that is the target that we were firing at. One of the pastimes we had while we were down there was a great egg race. In this competition, people had to move an uncooked egg the length of the flight deck in the shortest time. As you see, some didn't go as straight as others. In the first prize, the egg had to arrive at the other end of the flight deck unbroken. Another thing that the ship was represented in was the Battle Day Parade in Stanley. This is an annual parade to commemorate the Battle of the Falklands in 1914, when the British fleet fought off an attack by the German fleet. HMF Fife provided an armed guard and an unarmed platoon. And the ceremony was attended by the Civil Commissioner, Sir Rex Hunt, and the Military Commissioner, General Spacey.
The music was provided by the band of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, who were stationed on the island. As you can see from this film, the weather was sunny, although windy. Sir Rex Hunt inspected the guard and also the platoon provided by HMS Fife. flying their patrols overhead. And the third platoon on parade was provided by the local Falkland Island Defence Regiment. Sentries at the War Memorial were provided from the Royal Marine Detachment of HMS Yarmouth. After a two-minute silence, briefs were laid by the Civil Commissioner and the Military Commissioner, and also by the Senior Naval Officer, Falkland Islands. there was a fly past from a Sea King of the Naval Air Squadron. After the ceremony at the War Memorial, there was a march past at Government House.
here we have a view along one of the main streets in Stanley. As you can see, more potholes than flat roadway. After the Battle Day Parade in the afternoon, there was a demonstration on the seafront by the Army and the RAF of a lot of the equipment in use today in the Falkland Islands. Here we see a display of some of the weapon pods that are carried by the various aircraft that the Air Force are using in the Falklands. And here we have a rapier missile battery. Two phantoms flew past and also a Harrier came along. <laughs> 